So I'm going to be telling you guys um, all about the intertidal snails that you can find. So this includes all your whelks and your top shells. This is the tooth top shell, and these guys live on the higher shore. Um, so this is sort of the first species you'll find surveying, and they're one of the larger top shells too. And the best way to ID them is they're called tooth top shells because underneath you've got this lovely iridescent pearl and they've got this black lip. And this black lip is their tooth. Now, they're quite an overall grey in colour, although they can have this sort of very uh, striated mottled pattern on the top. You can see there that sort of mottled pattern, but it's quite dull in colour, um, overall just sort of being a very browny grey. This is the common periwinkle. They're one of the more boring snails you get on the uh, on the shoreline, and that's because they're just really uniformly brown, but they've got this really sort of pointy oval shape to them. So you can see the spire there, really pointy, and their perculum underneath is really oval. Now, the flat periwinkle is called the flat periwinkle because you might have guessed it's actually rather flat. The spiral doesn't really point out, and that's where it gets its flat name. Now, what's really cool about these guys is that they can come in lots of different colours, from brown to yellow to this sort of orangey brown and even bits of green on. And that's because these guys spend a lot of time in and out of water because you can find them in the mid-shore. Uh, yellower snails are more camouflaged underwater, whereas the brown snails are more camouflaged out of water. As these guys spend a lot of time in and out the water, um, they're camouflaged at different states of the tide. Also at the mid-shore, you move on to our next top shell species, which is the flat top shell. But these guys are also called the purple top shell. And these are real indicators that you're in the mid-shore here because these guys really like to have that sort of balance between being out of the tide and in the tide. Um, I like to refer to them as Scooby-Doo snails because they've got this really awesome purple and green striping. It's really quite bold and really quite obvious compared to other top shell species that are really quite uniform in colour. They've also got this lovely sort of keyhole right underneath on their um, perculum. That's why their scientific name is Umbilicalis because it's got that little um, umbilicus right in the middle. The next snail we've got is our first coniferous snail and that is the dog whelk, which is these two here. Now, dog whelks can come in all different colours. They can come stripy, they can come orange, they can come brown, or like these ones here, they're sort of this buff cream coloured. And they're these really conical snails. You can really see here the spire is really quite pointy and the shell's quite long. And if you turn them upside down, you can see this canal here where their, uh, their drill comes out and this is where they fill the water and they'll go around feeling the water, sensing out the pheromones from their prey like limpets and mussels and they'll drill in to these mussels and predate upon them, injecting them with an enzyme and slurping up the soupy remains. So these guys are really quite savage for such small little snails. And one of the lower shore species that you can get really quite commonly is the grey top shell. These top shells are really quite grey and uniform in pattern. A lot of them have this sort of slightly mottled darker brown colour but again it's just got this really overall grey pattern. And these guys are really sort of on the lower shore and almost subtidally. These guys also have a slight umbilicus underneath, but they lack that really bold purple and green striping. And instead, you can really see it's got that grey patterning. So the grey top shell really does live up to its name. Now, obviously, those are your main types of snails that you get, but you also get a few other types of snails on the intertidal zone. One of those snails being the rough periwinkle. These guys look really sm similar to smaller common periwinkles, but the main way you can tell them apart is they're not as oval as the common periwinkles, and they have these really pronounced ridges all over their shell, so they, that gives them that rough uh, texture that their name indicates to. And then if you turn them around, their perculum, their gap underneath, also isn't as round as the common periwinkle. These guys are found high up on the shore and don't grow that big. Um, including this one.